You're listening to the Business Mike Podcast. Amazing interviews with entrepreneurs and industry thought leaders. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business Mike Podcast. And joining me today is uh, Sharuk. Sharuk, can you let the listeners and viewers know a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do? Hi, Dawoodi. Thank you for having me tonight. It's my pleasure. Uh, my name is Shuruq Ali. I'm uh, Egyptian based in Kuwait. I work as assistant manager in customer experience management department in Bubian Bank, Kuwait. And I'm MBA holder. I'm specialized in consumer behavior and marketing management. I'm also a um, certified customer experience professional from CXPA. And I work in the CXPA Regional Council in the Middle East. And I do have like 11 years of experience in customer experience management, consumer behavior analytics, and uh, market research. Right. And uh, how did you end up working in the customer experience space? All the guests I've had did not start straight into customer experience. They probably started somewhere else and then found their way in customer experience. So what's your side of the story in that regard? Well, I started working in marketing management and then I got specialized in consumer behavior. So I worked in market research and um, consumer insights. When I worked in consumer insights, we were analyzing more the consumer behavior and the trends, things that affect the customer journey. So in a way or another, you find yourself analyzing the consumer journey and the consumer preferences in order to deliver the customer value. So um, this is a customer, customer experience, experience, but, but from, from uh, an analyzing, analyzing perspective. perspective. When you design the whole journey of the consumer, when you start managing the consumer relationship with your brand, this is, ends up with a customer experience management. So we start. I started with research. Uh, after research, I specialized with consumer behavior, and then it ends up with uh, customer experience management, which includes the research, the voices of customers, and uh, the customer journey. Right. Now, you mentioned earlier on that uh, you've been working for 11 years in Kuwait, specific specifically in uh, Consumer Insights. So I'd love to know what the journey has been in terms of uh, the amount of data you had at the beginning and the way you'd analyze it, what that looks like right now, and uh, the, the future of uh, customer data analytics. What does that look like? So what, where was it when you started? What does it look like now? And uh, where do you see it uh, going in the future? Uh, well, my 11 years experience wa, um, were divided between Egypt and Kuwait. So I worked like five years in Egypt and then I moved to Kuwait. However, uh, by the end, how you're analyzing consumer is the same because um, there is a human being who has needs, who has wants, and these needs and wants should be assessed and analyzed in a very scientific way. And then you add the cultural context to this. So based on the cultural context and the different or several factors that affected your consumer, you start to find the differences between the consumer behavior among the region, not only Kuwait or Egypt, but among the region, you find there are micro and macro factors that affect um, your consumer be behavior or preferences. So um, the amount of data, it's easy to have data. It's easy to gather data, like big number of data, but the difference between someone um, who's working as a customer insight analyst and someone who works with data is how you're gaining insights from these data, how you're gaining actionable insights, which allow you to enhance the performance of your organization and deliver a bigger value for your customer. So I do believe that we're living now in an era of, um, not only providing a product or service and your consumer will like it. You need to tailor each and every single feature in your product to deliver a greater value to your consumer. So we're saying we're waking up every day just to make the life of our consumer better. This doesn't happen with just an intention or a wish that you have every morning. This happens with working with the data, analyzing the data and exploring what are the drivers of your consumer, whether in purchasing patterns, purchasing power, whether the preferences and the cultural context that changes every day 
And you can see we're living in political instability, uh, difference in economic factors that we face every day. All these factors affect your consumer on a daily basis. So if this um, is not reflected on your data or you cannot gain an insight, you reach it to a place that your product or service will not be a priority in your customer life. Right. I have some follow-up questions that, that have intrigued me. Uh, the first one is, uh, can you share an example of uh, data perhaps that you can collect through analytics and how you would then use that to enhance uh, an experience of a customer? This is for the purposes of those who are not necessarily technical in the customer experience world and they just want to appreciate um, what exactly am I looking for in the data and how can I use those insights to benefit uh, my customers. And then the, the second question is, for how long do you need to analyze data? For example, once you know about a customer today, how frequently do you keep checking on that customer? Say, because one year from now, his um, data might look different. Now he was single, perhaps now he has a family or his income has grown or, you know, things like that. So how frequently do you mine this data so yeah those are the two questions uh, as a follow-up okay well um your first question is about um giving you an example well i can give you like a mega example that has an amazing change on the organization enhancement and i can give you a very tiny example that affects the customer maybe more than um the mega uh, example that i'm gonna give you but the issue here is something that when you're gaining a feedback or you're gathering data about customer and the customer starts to listen from you that you're saying to your customer you're heard we have received your feedback and we have received your concern and we're addressing it and we're working on it here is the difference because sometimes you cannot just make the change like this it's a process and there are many stakeholders in place and you need to bring everyone on the table to have like a solution for such an issue. But the customer doesn't want like a quick solution. Definitely, if you have the quick solution, this is going to be amazing. But if you don't for the time being, the, the um, telling the customer that you're heard, I have received your feedback. I'm not only a collecting data. You're not like a number in my data database. Here is the difference because the customer wants to give you a feedback and you would like to receive more and more of this feedback. It's not like one time response to fill your survey. You want people to talk and reach out and uh, seek your support and telling you how to improve because you cannot improve by uh, your imagination. You need a feedback for that. So this doesn't happen if there is um, if there is a relationship between two sides telling you that you're hurt your feedback is addressed we're working on it maybe i'm coming back for you like after one month two months it depends on the situation telling you that based on your feedback we have improved one two three four so the customer here turns from only a customer to an advocate he knows that he is something valuable for that brand so i do believe as Regardless of the purpose, regardless what kind of enhancement that happened, telling your customers, um, we call it in the customer experience management, closing the loop. Because I collect the feedback, but at the same time, I'm telling you, you're heard. Your feedback reached the right destination and we're working on it. So uh, this is for um, your first question. Your second question, um, how long are you um, checking on your customer? in terms of collecting data? Well, it depends. You have, sometimes you want to measure the transactional, um, the transactional journey of the customer. Uh, the customer goes, uh, goes and buys your product, so you would like to know how things are going. Everything was fine, the frontliner was uh, amazing, friendly, and knowledgeable, and you would like to check if everything uh, was very satisfying to the customer or not. This is we call the transactional matrix that we need to do it to do it on a daily basis to ensure that everything in place. However, you have another type of matrix, which is I do prefer 
which is the perceptional matrix. So you need to understand the perception and the emotions of your customers when he um, works with any touch point of your brand. How does he feel? How does he feel when he interacts with your touch point? How does he feel with after having like a long journey with your brand? What is the impact of this on his perception, preferences, and future steps that he's gonna decide? So if you're gonna talking, if you're gonna talk about perception, I do recommend like doing this on maybe every two months, quarterly basis, because perception doesn't change um, quickly. However, the satisfaction, one situation can turn you from satisfied to dissatisfied customer. One bad experience or negative experience would have a dissatisfied customer, but dissatisfied experience with another negative experience, this would lead to a difference in the perception of your consumer. Definitely, if you have the capacity, you can doing a quick pulse on your customer. Definitely, this is an amazing thing. Um, if you're having the capacity to have a qualitative feedback for your, from your customer, like focus groups or talking to your customer directly, definitely this is going to be amazing because you're going to have a humanized relationship. But if you don't, which is the case with most of the organization working with customer experience, then I do recommend the transactional uh, metrics or transactional surveys to be everyday to day to day activity which would have a value for the person who provide the service because he knows that he's monitored so he would like to show the best of him and at the same time it's very beneficial to the customer to detect if there is any gap or any opportunity to improve on daily basis within the transaction or the journey with the brand Right. That's a very thorough explanation and uh, definitely helpful for all those listening. That actually raised another question uh, in my mind. And that was once you've collected this data, how to prioritize what to work on? Because once you have the insights, you could see maybe two or three challenges in the business and you want to resolve those to help the customer. Now, the challenge comes in in knowing which of those to prioritize. So what sort of uh, approach do businesses use in determining which one of the areas to fix? Well, um, when you're receiving a feedback, usually we do categorize these types of feedback. So sometimes you have a negative experience with a customer. Then this negative experience needs an immediate action. You need to reach out to your customer, telling them you're heard and your situation is under investigation right now. Sometimes you're receiving an issue that mm, application is down, my transaction went wrong, I need a refund plus. So you're going through the process for the normal process for such an issue. So this issue is usually has a certain SLA and things will go in the normal flow. Sometimes you have a suggestion. So here so you can like having an alternative for the suggestion on that on the spot for the customer. And at the same time, you need to track these kind of suggestion. Okay, I cannot implement this suggestion right now. However, I can have a tracker that any time we're working on developing in the product or the service, this suggestion tracker is the source of innovation. So we do not go and meditate in saying we're going to innovate one, two, three, or we're not going to imitate the competitors for innovation. You have an amazing source for innovation, which is your customer feedback. Those people, those people, they are dealt with your product. They know you well and they are attached to your products. So they give you a feedback. You need just to leverage this feedback, turn it into innovation and turn it into development and turn it into a new feature to your product or service. So we call it a suggestion tracker. You just need to make sure that your suggestion, you have a place where the customer feedback is listed and you can parameterize it based on your strategy. At the same time, complain, there is like red flag feedback, which is complain or a negative experience or something that needs a quick action. You need a quick action and you need to um, have turned the customer uh, satisfied. We call it from zero to hero. 
because the customer is at zero level of satisfaction we would like to turn it into a hero experience which reflects on their loyalty level so this needs immediate action it's not nice when i complain from something to wait like three four days until someone call me back so it depends on how you're labeling your feedback and you're parameterizing based on um, the severity of the situation at the same time if you don't if you have like a positive feedback we do recommend don't ignore your advocates don't ignore people who are telling you, thank you, you're providing an amazing service. You need to go back to these people and telling them, thank you, we will keep working harder and harder to exceed your expectations. So at all levels, we need to reach out. However, how you're prioritizing is definitely the priority is for the severe incidents that we wish we don't face. Right. And uh, what about technology? What role does that play? Because um, from what you've mentioned, there's so much going on that the touch points where you collect the data, the analytics that you do to share with you insights on what's, what's uh, important, and what's not important, the trends and all that. So um, with emerging technologies, things like artificial intelligence and even the old technologies that are around that haven't been leveraged efficiently to analyze this data, how efficient are they? And from your experience, how are they easing your work in uh, doing these insights? Big time. Big time because uh, what I just had mentioned is based on how automated is the process. Just imagine with me, we're doing all of this manual because you have tons of data and you need to label each and every single feedback that you receive and you need to reach out. I think the capacity here would be a limitation. So the more automated process and the more um, uh, insights that you gain from this automated process, you can take an action easier and faster. And this is the objective of any um, VOC program or any program that seeks more data and insights. If you want to turn these data into insights, then you need just to think about this and to manage the relationship with the customer, not to work on too many manual uh, um, workload that would lead to human error. So um, now the consumer expectations uh, have expanded due to the technology. Um, and they seek convenience in each and every single touch point. So technology here plays two roles. First role is how you're automating all the touch points to minimize um, any negative experience with the customer and to facilitate the customer life by having the technology in place. At the same, we're calling it technology-driven touch point. So you're designing your touch point in a way that facilitate the customer journey and shorten the customer journey at the same time using the technology in gathering and analyzing data so you are as a cx professional just work on how can we improve improving procedures improving process in, improving your staff the knowledge whatever but you you're not working on um filtering and cleaning the data and instead of working on the actionable insights Right, I agree 100%. And uh, the, the other question that uh, what you've just said sprung to mind for me was regarding uh, the ethical issues uh, in terms of data collection. Uh, we're entering an era now where uh, companies are collecting so much data about their customers, some of which uh, goes beyond what they're supposed to, so they know who you are, who your contacts are, and things like that. Not all organizations do that, but where do we strike a balance in terms of collecting data and utilizing that to benefit um, the customer and where to look the other way or not to break these rules because it's it's a bit of a challenge these days with uh, businesses trying to take a lot of data from their customers just to maximize their efficiency so i wanted to hear your thoughts on that well i do believe it's not only about the data but it's all about the purpose of the organization so if we're talking about um, a customer centric organization not a sales driven organization then your objective is your customer not the sales sales will come and profits will come however if your sales driven organization you're trying to have each and every single opportunity to increase your sales regardless what are the way of increasing the sales 
when you're customer centric organization so your customer is at the center and the heart of each and every single decision that you make here we're gathering the data about the customer whether directly from the customer or from any other source just to see how can our product or service fits in the consumer lifestyle again to have a better lifestyle for the customer to facilitate the customer life to provide um, greater value for the customer so at this era if you're not providing a value for your customers simply i'm going to switch to your competitor i have too many options i have too many alternatives so easily I can browse on my mobile and get a better offer. So the difference here is how you would like to fit in the consumer lifestyle ethically. And at the same time, you need to make sure that your product or service providing a value. If you're not providing a value as a customer, I'll stay with you one time, second time, third time, I'm gonna switch. And it's very easy for me to switch. So the market is, we have many players in the market. Each and every single time, consumer has many factors, whether rational factors or emotional factors that affects their decisions every day. Uh, things are unpredictable on the macro context, so political or economic, or you sleep in a certain condition and you wake up, you find there are a war somewhere or inflation other way. So the consumer at the end of the day is not stable so the consumer is changing at the same time you need to um, tailor your value based on the consumer changes that you face every day so i do believe if and the consumer is aware they understand especially the new generations if we're talking about generation z uh, in a comparison with the millennials they are very aware and they are very selective when it comes to brands. They not choosing the brand as for uh, the prices or the availability or the offers. Maybe this is us, the millennials. But when it comes to Generation Z and the younger generations, they have a bigger exposure. They have a social media influence in their decisions. And at the same time, they are choosing the brands based on the alignment with the values of the brand. So when we're talking about ethics here, how many companies they faced boycott due to whatever reason due to their values. So I'm not choosing only a product or service. I'm choosing a value that aligns with my values as a generation. And based on that, I make up um, the decision of the purchasing. So when we're talking about ethics here, I think it's bigger than ethics. It's not only ethics, it's ethics, it's values, it's culture. Before you're targeting a certain group, you need to analyze all of that. And it's not one time homework, it's ongoing process because values and the situations are changing every day and this affects the customers. And we're calling this generation, the, gen the generation of activists. They are all having opinions and they are sharing their opinions on social media. And they do believe that they are the decision maker of each and every single decision in their lives. So you cannot just sell a product. You need to understand how this product aligning with their values in order to gain a long-term uh, relationship with this customer. How many customers you find a customer, especially from uh, Generation Z, telling them, uh, telling you that we're going to purchase this product. I know it's more expensive than other cheaper products, but I love the premium quality that they provide. I like how they are doing charities in one, two, three. I like their um, activity or the campaign or the CSR activities that you're, they are doing. Then you're not choosing a product here. You're choosing a brand that aligns with your value. At the same time, this brand represents you. So when you're talking about ethics and values, I think it's a part of the brand attributes that you need to design well. And at the same time, keep an eye to monitor the changes in the consumer values. All right, that, that was uh, spectacularly done. I think you really summarized that question uh, wonderfully and brought out all the aspects there. So as we wind down the interview, I would like you to share with us what key lesson you've learned 
regarding uh, consumer insights? What, what revelation have you seen that is very critical in order to execute this particular job uh, you know, effectively? So what's the main lesson you've learned as you've done your customer insights that you can uh, share with us to take home? Well, I would like to say that um, consumers now are very picky. Their standards are getting higher and higher. The exposure that we face now is higher than before. Um, social media made everything, everyone is exposed for large number of brands, amazing experiences every day. And people are having, especially here in GCC region, they have the ability to travel, to try new things, to try new experiences and to deal with luxurious brands. So in a way or another, consumers become very picky and their standards are very high. So when it comes to innovation here, we, we sh I always say that we don't need to do like amazing new things to surprise our consumers. We just need to have frictionless experiences that consumer goes, ha experience your brand, experience um, your touch point without having any fraction or any challenge. So if you're not having consumer um, seeking your support, then you succeed. You delivered the experience smoothly. Everything went right. Everything is amazing. So the consumer doesn't need to call the call center or go to branch to complain or go to a chatbot to ask about something because everything is available, whether information or the experience itself was frictionless and smooth and flawless. So um, customer experience is very simple. It doesn't need like um, doing or investing like to amaze your consumers. Consumers have high expectations, yes. At the same time, consumer expect simplicity in each and every single day when they experience your brand. So you need to make sure that your brand offers simplicity when it comes to experience. At the same time, you need to make sure that the value is reflected in each and every single touch point. So you're providing the value through communication, you're providing the value through touch points, you're providing the value post-purchase transactions. So the customer feels that the money was invested in this place is reflected in terms of emotional and rational value. All right, Shuruk, I can't thank you enough for coming onto the show and sharing your insights. Definitely, I'd I'd love to have you on again because I feel the time we've had is not enough to dive deeper into consumer insights. I've, I've appreciated the depth of this particular area in uh, customer experience, and and would definitely love to have you on again to go in even further. But before we let you go. For anyone who's listened to this or watched this that has uh, enjoyed the conversation and maybe wants to get in touch with you, where can they find you on the internet? How can they get in touch with you? Well, they can find me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn and I'm checking it on a daily basis. I think we talked like in, you sent me a message and I replied back within one hour. So I'm very active on LinkedIn with the same name. So Shuruq Ali, comma, MBA and CCXP. You will find me there and I'll be very responsive, I promise. All right. Well, thank you so much, Sharuk. Uh, that brings us to the end of this interview. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you again and wish you the very best. Thank you, Dawoodi. It was a very nice time and my pleasure. I would always be, I would always like to be your guest. Thank you so much.